All right, it's the CES meeting on November 1st. Our agenda is light today, but I wanted to have a conversation in this venue about following our conversation yesterday in the module harmony call regarding uh, the design families for sharing module, uh, sharing module graphs between agents of an agent cluster or beyond. Um, the, the three design families are uh, the first of which is consistent with our position at Agoric currently, which is that only a module source should be a shareable entity, um, that module instances should not be shared, which puts the downside of which is that it puts a great deal of burden on the user space between the uh, between agents if they're sharing modules. They have to reconstruct their module graph entirely out of uh, JavaScript code with module instances. The advantage of this is it allows um, module sources to be uh, uh, handles on information exclusively uh, inferred by a parse of the module source. Um, and currently, that's our hard line, that the module source should be limited to that. Um, however, it is, already, it is also the case that we have a carve out that the host may contain, uh, may attach to a module source information about the origin from which it was obtained in order to enforce the content security policy. So the, uh, the mo that, that's one extreme. On the other extreme, module instances are owned by a particular agent if they are virtualized um, which is to say that uh, they're similar to chips unum, um, which I mm, maybe <laughs> it might be similar to chips unum. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> or at least some people's uh, imagination of what chips unum is. Um, <laughs> In any case, the idea is that the that the state of a go ahead, chip. Say the relationships between the parts are wrong for that that analogy. Um, so to uh, uh, to clarify, in the most uh, uh, pardon. So virtualization to answer Yulia's question in chat uh, means uh, JavaScript virtualization of the of a host behavior. The um, which is to say implementation of an import hook or other hooks on uh, as given to a module instance when it was constructed. Um, it, it, yeah, and, and from a design principle, I think the one that all of these families share is that it ought to be possible to emulate a host, any host on any platform, um, which is to say you should be able to write a bundler regardless of what platform you're running on and that and those bundles should be runnable on any other platform or similar similar kinds of things. Um, the uh, let's see. So on the the other on the other extreme, a module instance has a hidden universally unique identifier which means that you would only have one inst that if you had an if you had that instance shared between different agents of an agent cluster that their import graphs would be identical um, everything that they depend upon would have an uh, have an identical import graph and to do that it is necessary for uh, so for for host um, for host implementations of a module, um, this is really, really quite straightforward because the only information you need to share is uh, the URL and the source. And the host behavior is presumed to be identical regardless of which agent you're coming from. So they proceed, they would proceed orthogonally. There would be no, ne no necessary. I, I, I'm confused about something. Mm -hmm. um, the, I think, I think we must be talking about some concept that's less than a module instance, because module instance includes the state that comes from the top level evaluation of the module source. 
Um, and obviously that the result of that evaluation has live objects that inherit from primordials of the origin realm and all that. And, 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 you know, each, and also the evaluation outside of the hardened JavaScript context is not necessarily deterministic. So even if the realms were otherwise identical, the, you could still end up with each evaluation being different states. So, yes. so we're talking about something prior to the evaluation. Yeah, the idea is that we're attempting to, in this design family, the idea is to replicate module instance graphs between agents, not to share state. Uh, I saw a hand. Do we have a do we have a name for that concept? Because it can't be module instance. That's right. Um, I've added a couple of uh, comments in the chat. Um, uh, I didn't realize that we weren't including the state, so I had the exact same thought as Mark uh, when this was explained. And this was a really useful explanation. Thank you, Chris. Um, this kind of feels like because we are explicitly talking about the properties of the graph, this feels more like it's a module node. That's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, Hereafter to be referred to as a module node. Okay, uh, let's use that language for now. And then uh, I want to hear what the use case is here because I'm very heavily on the side of we should not be sharing module instances uh, amongst agents in an agent cluster. Rather, we should be sharing the module source. But I don't know what the use case is for having a module node shared yeah. uh, amongst the, the motivating use case for all of these design families is to be able to orchestrate um, to orchestrate multi-worker uh, multi worker systems, right? Um, so there's usually in such a thing there would be a uh, there would there would be a worker from which that 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 is orchestrating the entire affair, and um, it would be responsible for instantiating workers and then giving work to them. And the idea is to use modules as an, be able to use the module graph as a way to express. Um, uh, as a way to transmit behavior to other workers, the, the intended behavior to other workers. Can I just follow up what you said there with um, the reason we would want to share module nodes is to do less work, is that right? Yeah, um, another, another, re another motivating use case specifically is coming from the Node.js folks where they want to have a worker responsible for, they want to relegate the work of actually doing the fetching and compiling to a worker pool. Um, even in the ordinary case of uh, uh, a module just running in the main thread. Um, and the idea is to come up with a, a design from one of these th families, presumably that solves both problems. I saw um, a comment from Jazz regarding your hand. No, I, 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 I lowered my hand. Uh, uh, Yulia, can, can you repeat that word? Did you say S work? I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar with this. What, what is that? Less work, as in reduce the- oh, work less work. Have. So for example, if we only have the module source and we don't have access to the uh, module node, we, uh, and we, let's say we have five workers who are sharing a workload that is all the same. So like the work that you're doing is the same across five different workers, you're just, um, load balancing it. Uh, and I could see in that case, if you've only got module source, you have to rebuild the graph in each case. And if we have uh, the node, then you don't have to rebuild the graph. Uh, you can share that work amongst those workers. This is somewhat complicated in the case for node or for, for JavaScript because the graph grows dynamically over time because of dynamic import. But so the idea, so one idea in the third design, in the most extreme design family, the module nodes would be shareable append only maps from module specifier to the corresponding module of corresponding linked module node. Each, each agent would be responsible for, re -eval for evaluating that independently um, in order to build out their module instance and module namespace, but the, but the work of building the graph would be shared. Um, this has the implication that we can ensure that the graphs are the same <laughs> Even... so, so, so several questions right right off. Uh, when you say append only map, is this shared append only map or separate or or common base and then separately appended append only map? So there therein lies the distinction between a host provided implementation of a node versus a node that is implemented in JavaScript using the module instance constructor. Uh, but 
if we start with the module instance constructor notion, one. You mean, you mean module node constructor notion? Uh, the module instance would imply the creation of that it closes over a new instance of a module node. Okay. And the home of that node for the purposes of running uh, import behavior would be the agent in which it was constructed, such that if a module node is shared by multiple agents, um, whenever an, one of those agents uses dynamic import, for example, in order to uh, to grow its module graph or its module map, um, the owner of the module node would be responsible for running JavaScript behavior to grow that map. I, so I'm still, still not understanding. So in one in in one agent of an agent cluster, the map grows. What happens in the other agents of the same agent cluster that were sharing that were sharing the module node? The map is owned by the node. So um, the, the each map, map is I'm sorry the, the map each map is owned by each node. Each node owns a map from import specifier to linked node. So this is a local view on that map, or is this a global view? Global view across so, the entire okay. region cluster. It would be it would be shared. Okay. So so the so the answer is that in the in this view that the appending is shared across the agent cluster. Correct. And therefore is a communications channel across the agent cluster? Um if Yes, which is to say that if a, uh, which is to say that it is a communication channel in the case where you have expressly transferred a module instance to another agent. Okay, so the ability to transfer a module in a module node instance um, is the ability to then communicate via that module via side of, effectively side effects uh, visible through that module node instance. Correct. So one can imagine an HTML integration where post message gains the ability to transfer uh, what in one JavaScript agent is a module instance that closes over a module node. The module instance would be left behind. A new module B instance would an instance would be created on the receiver and it would share the module node of the sender. Wow. Okay. Uh, another question. Okay. So I think think that we may have a shared understanding at this point. In the third design family, module nodes would be shared between agents, and they would okay. effectively be uh, uh, an append-only data structure that can be used as a communication channel. OK. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I have another question. Yeah, uh, go With ahead. regard to the first design family, module source only, um, the is for that family, there's no particular reason to restrict this to an agent cluster, right? You can already do post message between agent be between agent clusters. You just can't share share. You can't share synchronously shareable memory, mm -hmm. um, i.e., shared array buffers. Uh, it's already the case that post message within an agent cluster can, if the implementation allows it when sending a string to share the underlying heap allocation of the string, uh, uh, but between agent clusters, probably copying the string, neither of which is observable. I think exactly the same reasoning about the ability to send strings either within or between agent clusters should apply to module sources. Um, Yes, and if that is the case, the interactions with content security policy are interesting because a module source also closes over its origin. Is okay. that transferable? <laughs> and um, I think that the uh, I think that I think that the consensus is that the, the origin should be such that it is possible, so such that it that this feature is still useful in the presence of a of a of a content security policy, a module that has been created by the host on one agent when transferred to another agent should remain evaluatable without requiring 
uh, a round trip through text. Once you have a round trip through, through text, you lose that origin information and is no longer evaluatable under a no eval C CSP. Okay, um, I just want to just uh, put a marker that that I want to come back to the unforgeability of origin versus virtualizability because because that tension is interesting. Yes. Um, so these are the two extreme cases, as Yulia was right to observe on the last call, um, though perhaps not for perhaps based off of a misunder misunderstanding anyway. Um, the this this third the third the most extreme design uh, uh, case where module instances are shareable, module node instances. Module nodes are shareable. Yes, um, the, uh, which I take to be the whatever the internal record is for what it's worth, um, backing uh, backing a module instance. The um, in that family. I believe Yulia is correct that it means that you have some cross-agent garbage collection and the garbage collector does need to be cycle aware, um, but it only needs to be done on this module node graph, not on uh, live instant, live JavaScript value space. Um, and that is a complication. All, th all, of, both of the families described are stretchable over a network, for what it's worth. I can readily imagine using CapTP, um, especially if CapTP has a primitive for doing distributed garbage collection. Um, CapTP is another one where the issue of unforgeability of origin becomes very problematic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, that brings us to the intermediate design family. I will note that nobody is seriously considering the most extreme with mo shareable module instances at this point. Um, I, I think that it's present mostly as a, a straw person. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> the, um, the intermediate design family, I am warming to, but hesitant and that is to say um module sources remain the only uh the only transferable however the origin and the origin is transferable but what luca would like to see and i presume most of the champions of uh transferability in general would like to see is that the module source also transfers um, post private data describing its origin up to including its entire URL, such that if a module instance is constructed and delegates its import behavior to the host behavior, the host import behavior would be able to see that private data. This is virtualizable. So if you can imagine um a host a, a virtual host of modules that is to say a javascript user space that is using module constructor and module source constructor to emulate another host's behavior what it would be able to do is use a weak map to associate module sources with the or with the url from which they were originally obtained and then define its import hook behavior accordingly um since it since it isn't since this virtual host is in a position to see that weak map, um, it would be able to infer um, the module resolution behavior. Uh, it would be able to implement the module resolution behavior of the web in terms of the URL of the source. Um, in that case, this is an interesting compromise because we're all in the in the first design family. We're already resigned to allowing private data to be transferable. Um, and in this one, we are simply allowing additional private metadata to be shared between a host implementation of a module source and, um, and the host implementation of a module instance. I think that this might be coherent. It has certain implications. Um, for example, 
I'm sorry. Uh, question from Jazz. I, I, I put it on text because I did not want to interrupt you. Apparently, I still interrupted you. It's fine. The, the, but I don't understand what virtualizable means in this case. Like, is like that the, the strict definition I think is impossible in JavaScript, right? We, we can't move. I don't I, What does virtualizable mean? I don't even understand. In this particular case, it means a user space implementation of a module system. It, it, and the end of the goal is for a user space implementation of a module system to be able to emulate the behavior of any valid host behavior. Uh, emulate means if I move a function, it's going to return the same value as it would have on the original host. In this case, that, that uh, is too extreme a position. No, 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 let, me, let, me, let me, I think it's the, when, when you virtualize, you, you know, you're creating this illusion. You're creating this, this virtual world that's distinct from the pace, base world you're virtualizing on top of and the the fidelity of the virtualization is only with regard to maintaining the illusion for other code that's operating within the same illusion in other words within you know within you know other virtual contexts that are in on the same joke so in with regard to the weak map uh, the in order for some for not, for virtualization in another compartment to be in on the joke, it would have to you would have to have arranged to share the same underlying weak map, um, uh, or access to the same underlying weak map state uh, to coordinate to have them in on on the joke as if they're the same host. That's what it sort of means to be the same host, and that would be distinct from the base host, and in particular. It would. It has to be distinct from the base host because you might be emulating a host with origin on top of a host without origin, or a host with origin defined one way on top of a host with origin defined another way. I see you. Oh, I, I, I. I. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Continue, Jazz. It's your follow-up to question. Um, I, I. So. I, I. So there's several things here. I, so I'm. I'm. So I might be I might be in the wrong meeting uh, because I'm messing up uh, things that are, are leaked by things like browsers. Uh, but origin is not the only thing that leaks uh, uh, evidence of where you are. There's all kinds of DOM functions that leak evidence of where you are. There's also differences in implementation that leak information about where you are that changes the behavior. I, I think that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause my question. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to think about it, and then I'm going to come back to the group. Thank you. Uh, Yulia. Just a second. Um, uh, uh, make it very short. Um, I have been sort of replacing virtualization with in my head with simulation here, and I don't know if that's the right thing to do, um, because virtualization uh -huh. Yes, my dear. Uh, virtualization is a pretty strict concept. And I was thinking here that we are simulating um, uh, aspects, but uh, um, maybe uh, abstracting away details that we might not be interested in. So when you've been saying um, implementing host behavior in user space, uh, that sort of fit my definition, but I don't know if that's been the right mental model. Uh, could you correct me if I'm wrong there? I think that simulation is a pretty good word for it. I'm actually not deeply familiar with the meaning of virtualization. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I am. There's, there's a particular, it's, it's nice that there's sort of one particular computer science paper that's really excellent by Popek, who's the first author, P-O-P-E-K, um, in an operating system context about what a full, fully virtualizable uh, instruction set design is that allows um, uh, uh, virtual operating systems uh, to to happen painlessly. The x86 is not a cleanly virtualizable machine by this context, which is why it's been so hard to virtualize. Um, the uh, I th from the the criteria in that paper and uh, the 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 fact that the x86 violates the criteria actually kind of 
is is very clarifying on this. Um, X86 probably happened well after the paper was written, so there was no excuse. Um, the issue is the separation of system mode and user mode instructions in the instruction set such that uh, a program that's actually running in user mode in which all of its attempts to run system mode stuff gets trapped and sent to another user mode process uh, to emulate can fully emulate um, uh, any system mode environment can fully emulate what what could have been seen in system mode in a different context. So for JavaScript, that's you know the that's one of the extraordinary things about the um, the Conway's law accident of history that the language and the host were so cleanly separated, almost perfect reflection of this pop popec distinction. So what we mean by virtualizable here, I think cleanly says that you can virtualize any host on any other host by use of things like the compartment API uh, and without having to translate sources or interpret the language. In other words, you don't have to, you don't have to um, intervene in the, the you know the the language evaluation mechanism. You just have to uh, intervene in the um, the mechanisms like the compartment API that are designed as hooks for enabling this virtualization. But with a with a small number of exceptions that are really painful, right, Mark? Like uh, enumeration. The uh, so uh, uh, the fact that top is not virtualizable. Uh, ah, no, uh, top, top, top is perfectly virtualizable. Within a compartment, I can create a global that has a non-configurable top with accessors. Okay, and you are right. Have it act, act, that's, that, and that's, that's the key thing. That's the difference between um, uh, you know, this distinction about are you in on the joke is... Um, the the issue of top is interesting because there's a there's something more extreme than cleanly virtualizable that I don't know how to how to how to define. Yeah. Um, that's that's why that's when you would need to be using the actual global as the virtual global that you can't do in a browser because of top. But virtualizability does is absolutely does not require you to use. The actual global is the virtual global. You're 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 right. How about post message, which uh, sends along origin? Well, so that's that's the so the origin is um, uh, is exactly the the uh, this interesting issue that I think works out, but it, it but whether it works out in detail, I don't know browsers well enough to examine. But the basic yeah, idea yeah. is that you've got a, you know, a weak map mapping things to their alleged origin. And in order to be in on the joke, you have to have arranged shared access to uh, the, the, the same weak map or what is effectively the same weak map, you know, share, shared access so that there can be coordination between the virtualizations that are in on the same joke about what the mapping to origin is. In this case, post message and the module implement the module system implementation are in cahoots. Yeah. 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 Cahoots is also uh, a good uh, word. Yeah. I, I, I like both of these. Uh, uh, there's also, so uh, the exact examples are just demonstrative of the things that the host environment is leaking. Uh, uh, WebRTC also leaks like your IP address, for example. Like, it actually leaks every hop along your IP address uh, chain. Uh, that, that's also bad, right? Like, that also breaks this ability to do virtualization. Now, this is, and this is fine for us because that's a deniable capability. Well, the deniable is not adequate. The question is, can you emulate? Oh. Right. 
Thank you. Because otherwise, there will be tasks that were possible before that are not possible in the virtualized environment. And, and, and uh, I mean, in the version of top that I was thinking of, Mark has a better answer, but that, that was also the case. Like I could not give top to people because the, in the system that I had, I was not able to virtualize it. So the, so I don't know WebRTC well enough, but I mean, here's, here's sort of my starting point for analysis, which is on an actual host, whatever this, whatever the behavior in question is, it's implemented by code. It's implemented by code that's typically not JavaScript, like C or C++, but right. obviously it could be implemented by JavaScript. If it were implemented by JavaScript, would it be able to be presented to, to other JavaScript, you know, with the attachment of it to other JavaScript via the um, you know the compartment API via by, via these non-language evaluation mechanisms be adequate to create a full fidelity illusion be adequate to have effectively provided the web RTC implementation to JavaScript in a way that seems exactly like the way the C++ code had provided the web RTC implementation to JavaScript and I mean of course the answer is yes because both of these are Turing. And so, yes, but the, so like if, if I, so I have not followed this proposal closely, but like part of what I would take as part of the proposal to anyone is to say, these are the constraints that we want, that, that we would push along with. Like that, I think that that's the part that I'm missing. Um, what are the constraints that I require from my underlying host that allows them to do everything that I need and whatever they need to do to optimize, but not violate this ability that I have to virtualize. I think I think that that's the part that I haven't seen captured. I see Yulia's hand. All right. So one one. So uh, maybe it's fulfilled by the criteria that Mark set out earlier, where he said that it is virtualizable in the sense that it can virtualize the underlying host uh, that is, for example, a web browser, which is async, but can it virtual, um, I think the reason I was thinking simulation is I believe that the system cannot virtualize a synchronous module loading system. Is that right? Uh, I would not expect it to be able to implement, uh, to emulate a synchronous, okay. a space synchronous module loading system. Yeah, that, that, that's correct because uh, that's that's exactly where you have to cross the boundary and start virtualizing the language evaluation mechanism. And at that point, you violated the Popec separation. And you Thanks. know, Turing, with, with my thinking. Yeah, and, and that's sort of the difference between Turing universality and Popec virtualizability is if you do intervene in the language evaluation mechanism, Turing universality makes it very clear that you can emulate anything on anything. And the issue is, what can you emulate without crossing that boundary? So for this intermediate design family, the question is whether that is an acceptable ground to retreat to, or rather is this, is we know that this, this group is uh, open to the first design family where module sources is, is transferable without uh, and 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 maybe even and I think that it is necessarily the case that we need to be okay with transferring origin. Um, and the question the question is whether we are uh, equally open to the second design family. I know we're also we are also open to the third design family, but it is probably a bridge too far. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll just say I am not open to the third design family. I'm sorry, I'm not open. I'm not open to the. Wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm confused about second and third again. Uh, well, then let's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will give them names. Um, module source sharing, Nea, first design family. Module node sharing, the third design family. <laughs> um, and uh, and the intermediate is module source source sharing with. Um, revelation of origin data to the host. And I need to come up with a better name for that. 
I'm I'm running with intermediate because it's between the two. The the module node sharing with the shared append only map. The shared append only map does not sound virtualizable. Which, okay, so which is to say that if you were writing a module in the middle system. You would spawn a bunch of workers. Um, you would arrange for them to have a communication channel. Um, you would assign unique identifiers to every module instance that is constructed that would be used as the key and the value and, uh, or rather the key in a local mod, a nodes module map and the values of that module map. Uh, you would arrange for any import hook in any age, any of those workers to use that communication channel to consult the module map in it and the uh, in the agent in which it's homed that would reveal the identifier of the module instance um and presumably also the uh, identifier of the agent that owns it that would be communicated back or distributed to the uh, to 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 the import hook of the other agent i think that this is I, I suspect that this is virtualizable. Okay. Well, at, at least we have clarity on what the question is that needs that would need to be answered. So, in asking, are we open to all three of these? Uh, as long as we're clear that open doesn't imply agreement, it just implies that uh, we don't yet know that any of them are disqualified. Do we know that the import source is qualified? Yeah, I think so. Okay. For, just to speak from my perspective, I'm not sure how comfortable I am oh. with family three, um, the module graph node uh, being shared um, because of its implication for implementation. Uh, it would need to have, uh, it, especially with a growable shared module graph, I'm concerned about that. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 consistent with my understanding. Yeah. So uh, the one, so um, I, can I ask um, the shared origin, the reason to have the shared origin is for virtualization. Is that right? Um, the shared, uh, the shared origin, um, the motivation for sharing the origin and having the origin a particular, having the origin be revealed to the host mm. after it's been in, uh, uh, after a module instance has been constructed from the source. The purpose of that is to um, carry whatever host import behavior one agent has defined to another agent. The alternative to this would be to do to route that through user space, for example, constructing a worker and passing a handle to the import map from one from one web context to another. Um, that, and that is, that is a complication we would, uh, that the, 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 the champions would like to avoid. So do you mean import map or do you mean module map? I mean, map? I mean, import map or rather uh, generally sure. any, um, whatever the host resolution behavior is, mm -hmm. um, they want to be able, they want to be able to transfer that to another worker. Okay. Is this the right space to solve the import map question? Because I think we should solve that separately. And that's something that I've been working on within the HTML space. Yeah. Uh, this. So to, uh, I think that the burden, the burden that we need to meet is 
uh, or the obligation we have is to ensure that this problem remains solvable on the HTML HTML side. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, two. I agree with that. Um, okay. Uh, I'll talk with the other uh, champions because I wasn't aware that it was for import maps work, which is something that I've done a sketch of a design for with Dominic. Um, but it hadn't been taken into consideration module source and module source sharing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I'll follow up on that. Awesome. Um, what I'm hearing is that Agoric's position is that uh, module source sharing is probably qualified. Um, module node sharing is also probably qualified but uh and we and <laughs> and we, but rather no 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 that's that's not quite right mark maybe you could state the position uh module source sharing is qualified everything else at this point is suspect but not yet known to be disqualified which i think is a great place to stand at the moment uh the, the uh which is, which is to say that I will take to module harmony the feedback that we should drill into what the implications are for the intermediate module. Um, intermediate. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'll also say that another criteria from you know another part of the agoric stance is that uh, virtualizability in this Popex sense is a requirement on any on any proposal for this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I've got what I need from this topic. Uh, does anybody else have any further questions or further topics? Um, I sort of have a, a topic that I'd just like to hear, but it can be like, uh, it's a follow-up on, uh, sorry. Um, it's a follow-up on something you guys have discussed before, um, specifically async contexts and what the status is there from the perspective of the SES group. Uh, Mark did an extensive investigation to whether it was that, whether uh, I believe the term fluid scoping was consistent with the object capability model. And we, um, Last time we discussed this, we concluded that it was consistent. Okay. Yeah, I, think it's, I mean, it's, it's actually a, a fascinating topic because it's actually can't be done. It cannot be emulated within the object capability rules as normally stated. Uh, so it required this you know, really fascinating deeper investigation about what are the safety properties that are the motivation for those rules and does this change this 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 change in the rules can the change in the rules be understood in such a way that they maintain the motivating safety properties and therefore it can be an expansion of what we mean when we talk about the you know object capability security Without losing the implied safety, and the answer, the answer was yes for very interesting reasons. Yeah, and by way of background on async context, um, I have a, a deep-seated wariness of anything that smells of dynamic scope. And so, when I was walking around our neighborhood with my neighbor now, Multi Ubel, um, who's the CTO at Vercel, um, and uh, and and to whom I owe a debt of gratitude for having me at, uh, at the JSConf EU in like 2009, 2010. Um, he brought up that uh, they had recently hired Justin Ridgewell and that he was going to serve as a delegate and that Vercel was joining um, ECMA and that he was really excited about it getting async context into the language. And I was very disturbed, but I told him a couple of days later that I was like, I told him at the moment, like, we can't talk about this. I was upset. <laughs> uh, it would disturb the possibility of a growing friendship. <laughs> but uh, the um, but uh, a couple of days later, I told him, he's not, if, if we're going to approach this, we need to um, have a conversation at the CES meeting with Mark and um, and so I, I, I brought Justin and Mark together to, to have that conversation. And I think that the outcome has been delightful, um, to, to it. 
I, Agoric is excited to use exit context for turn tracking. Are, are there, uh, have, has anything been flagged around the snapshots API for that proposal? Uh, because that was one that I was a little bit unsure about. Uh, it gives user space control over the snapshotting um, capability. Um, yeah. Oh, no, yes, the snap, the snapshot, uh, that was actually, without the snapshot, it's actually, um, I think that was the line, that without the snapshotting, it actually is emulatable just in user space on top of the classic OCAP system. Uh, it was the snapshots that required the, um, you know, basically the, clo the, the closure capture of the fluid context. Um, uh, that was the thing that couldn't be emulated that really created a fundamental difference and that turned out to be safe by this deeper analysis. Um, uh, but their snapshotting plus um, uh, plus finalization would violate it. Um, uh, there's um, and so there's there are these concerns that the V8 team has about wanting to not have to rely on the garbage collector to uh, clear out the bookkeeping of async context. And they wanted to clear out the bookkeeping, you know, and in order to clear out the bookkeeping uh, with less overhead, you know, with less mechanism than garbage collection is inconsistent with safe snapshotting. In fact, my question was also related to finalization and how that might interact with snapshotting. Um, yeah. So uh, can you go into a little bit more detail about finalization and uh, snapshotting and why it's safe? So, uh, with, so, so without finalization, uh, snapshotting is safe. Um, yeah, it's, uh, okay, there, there are several ways to think about it. Um, I'm going to, the... For, let's see what time is it okay uh given the limited time i'm going to to speak in possibly mysterious koan terms that need to be expanded in a later meeting i can um, also i can also uh dig up the recording of the just conversations we had and share them with you yeah okay. if, if, if this has already been discussed i can definitely watch um uh or read uh past discussions um I, okay yeah the, I, i'm just yeah, asking the, to catch up because uh, i missed a bunch of stuff Okay, uh, so the reason why finalization is inconsistent with snapshotting is without snapshotting, these fluid contexts unwind at, um, you know, at knowable times. With snapshotting, uh, the, um, you know, the closures hold on to a fluid context and you can't know when a closure can no longer be resumed uh, uh, without garbage collection. Um, so if I understand correctly, the V8 team is looking at various kinds of linear snapshotting or some kind of restriction on snapshotting. And, and at that point, I stopped following. Um, a quick question, is Saleh uh, from the V8 team? Um, actually, no, I just, um, I've been kind of working on the access um, WebAssembly stuff. Um, yeah. Thanks for your comment. Oh, you're welcome. All right, I think that we have a meeting. Thank you everyone for coming.